the last section of this chapter, the Earth Engine API basics. In the previous section, we learned about the basics of JavaScript, how to create variables, create lists, write functions, and we just got to know the syntax of how to write code in JavaScript. So JavaScript is a language which we can use to define our workflow. But the workflow itself should consist of code that calls this Earth Engine API. Because all the heavy lifting, all the image processing, all the, the, the awesome remote sensing stuff that Earth Engine does will be done using the Earth Engine API. Uh, the API is very vast. There are many, many functions to do the stuff you need to do. If you want to create NDVI, create complete NDVI, that is a function for that. If you want to do uh, spectral unmixing, there is a function for that. Right? If you want to do supervised classification, there is an API for, for that. So uh, it provides you with API functions to do all of the remote sensing stuff that you want to do, and we'll learn slowly as we go through the chapters. So we'll first learn how to find those functions and uh, create those uh, code that uses the function and run them from the code editor. Okay. Let's just jump into the code editor. We're going to start a new script. Uh, the script that we just built is already there in your code uh, uh, checkpoint. Now we're going to build a code that is uh, will be the checkpoint B. So we'll click this reset button to clear the script. So we'll start with the fresh script. So when we all do uh, uh, anything, any data processing or any operations, we have to use the Earth API. Let's take a simple example. We're going to define two variables, A equals one, well, B equals two. I want to add these two numbers. And people who know JavaScript, they'll say, oh, that's simple, A plus B. You print A plus B, you get the result. But as I alluded earlier, you don't do that in Earth Engine. You don't use any JavaScript operations to do um, any processing. The JavaScript is merely a way to call the Earth Engine API to do any work. So even a simple thing like adding two numbers has to be done by the Earth Engine API. So where is this API? How do we use this? So you can see there's a docs tab in your code editor. This is the docs tab. This contains the, all the API functions that are available to you. They are organized uh, alphabetically. They all start with EE. EE stands for Earth Engine. These are different modules. And each module contains API functions to work with that particular object type. So for example, if you say, I want to do some date processing. I have a date. I want to compute the date three months from that. I want to compute a date range of 15 days. I want to create a 16-day composite. I want to create a date range of that. So if you want to do some date processing, you would go here and expand this section and you'll find all the different functions that are available for date. And as you click on each of them, you'll see the documentation of that function. The way to read the documentation is that this is the function, it's part of the EE date module. So you have a date object, you can run advance on it. It takes three parameters. The parameters that are in italics, they are optional. So they'll have a default value. So you don't have, have to pass it on. So if you want to use this function to give these two parameters, delta and unit, and it'll give you a date. And you'll see that it returns a date. There'll be some documentation about how to use it. So this also, I find it a, a, a great relief that I don't have to go to a different place to look at the documentation. All the functions that I need to use are just there. And you can also search for the functions and say, I'm trying to do something. Let me see if there's a function and you can search for it. But usually what, uh, when I'm trying to do something and say, I have this list, can I, I want to do something with it. How can I do this? How can I extract an item from a list? Or how do I append an item to a list? And I don't have to guess the function. I can just go to ee.list and see if there is a function that can do this. So if you read through this, you will see that, oh, there is a function called get. So if you have a list and you want to extract the index zero out of it, you will say list.get index. Right, so all the functions that you can run on different objects are already here, and you can use that. So let's now work on a problem. How do we add these two numbers? So first, we need to create a number object. This is not a number object. This is a JavaScript variable, which is just a, a stores an integer. I want to create an Earth Engine number uh, object. So I go here in my docs, and I look for something that matches that. And so well, there's a module called e.number. Let's expand and see what is it. And you can see the first one says, constructs a new number, creates a new number object. And how to create a new number object? You just say ee dot number and give it a number. So let's create a number object. I'll say ee dot number 
of A. Okay. So this will create an E number, which you can now run all the number functions. Temporarily, I'll just store it in a, a variable. I'll just call it uh, EEA. Yeah. So EEA is the Earth Engine version of the A variable. Now I want to add this to numbers, right? So I need to find a function that is part of the number module that can add stuff. So I can go through all the functions and I see this function that might be a match. I click on it and it says, this is add. It says adds the first value to the second. And you run it on a number object. You say dot add, give it another number. And it adds the first number to the second number. So now we have this earth engine A object. And we say add B. Okay. So this was an object. This is a number object that we just created. So this is a number. And we say dot add B. And this will be our result. So first we create an object and we call the add function, which takes one parameter and it gives us a result. Let's see if this one worked. And you can see when I ran this, you saw the gear spinning. That means this code, this instructions were sent to the Earth Engine servers because our browser doesn't understand what is an E number. So this instruction was sent to the Earth Engine server other than these services, oh, I know how to create a number object and how to add another number to that. So I did that and the result came back. And when you see the gear spinning, that is Earth Engine sending the data to the server, the server's computing and you're getting the result, right? So even doing addition of two numbers, you have to use the Earth Engine API. The good news, all the API functions are right there and you'll be able to use that. Let's just kind of simplify this a bit. You can write all of this in a single line. So all of this I wrote, I can just write var result equal to ee dot number eight. So I first create a number object and I can say dot add b. And this dot syntax allow, is called chaining operators. So you can take one uh, result of one operation called dot. That means it's going to run on the result of the first operation and it's going to run another operation, right? So this three lines and this two lines are the same. So instead of creating a number first, storing the variable, calling add on it, you can just say e dot number a dot add b, and it's going to do the same thing. And so I'm going to remove this, and you'll see that it gives the same result. So this is how we use the Earth Engine API to add two numbers. You're going to learn a lot about how to do different kinds of processing during this book, but I want to kind of drive home this factor, uh, this idea that or anything you want to do can be done using the API. So let's say we want to create a list of numbers, list of years. So I want to create a list which contains the list of years from 1980 to 2020. So I just want this list of 40 years. Maybe I want looking at uh, doing some time series analysis. I want to have uh, some data for each year. So first I need the list of each year. So I can do something like this. I can just say, create a variable year list and say, start creating my list. So 1980, 1981, 1982, and so on. And I can type those 40 numbers manually and that works. But again, this is quite painful. Uh, I have done like this before when I was learning Earth Engine, I didn't know better. But now I'm we'll telling you that if you're doing some kind of processing like this, where you want to create numbers, Let's use Earth Engine API. So we want to create a list of numbers. So we want to look under this module ee.list. So let's expand this and go through each uh, function and see if there's a function suitable that allows us to create a sequence of numbers. And you see this function here. It says ee.list of sequence. Give me a start, end, step, and count, and I'll generate the list. And again, step and count are optional. So we just give a start start value, end value, and it'll give a list of numbers. Let's start and see if we can create this. So we'll call e.list.sequence. Again, everything is case sensitive. We'll type it exactly in the case that is here. And we'll say start here is 1980 and end here is 2020. And we we'll print year list.
And you can see now we have a list of 41 items. All the list years from 1980 to 1920. It was constructed using the API. This is uh, how you use the API to create this. Again, this function has different parameters. Uh, as I mentioned, only the first two are required. I can create, I have a third parameter. Maybe I want a list of years separated by five years at a five year interval. Maybe I'm doing five yearly analysis. So I want to have one analysis from 1980 to 1985, 1985 to 1990, and so on. So I want to generate a list of years, but with an interval of five. So you can see the third parameter here is a step. And if I specify that, you'll see a different list, which is now created with the interval of five. And this allows you to uh, create, uh, use Earth Engine API for different things. And as you can go around, you'll see there are many, many functions, but they're all documented here. So my advice to you is whenever you want to do something, some data processing, figure out what kind of object you are working with. Are you working with images? Are you working with lists? Are you working with uh, features? And find an appropriate function to do the data processing, and you'll be able to find that. With that, uh, we are uh, at the end of this section where we learned about how to use the Earth Engine API functions to do some data processing tasks. And this is going to be the checkpoint B, so F1.0B checkpoint. If you load the script, this is going to be the exact script. You have a little bit of exercise. You can try this out at the end of the chapter. If you followed uh, the chapter so far, it should be fairly easy. It, allow, it uh, tells you to use the Earth Engine API function to merge two uh, strings, merge two text items. And uh, I hope you'll be able to figure this out. <laughs>